Thanks for coming here, everybody. It's so good to see you all. Today is Thursday. Uh, I almost called it four day. So when you speak, when you talk about the days in Tlingit, we refer to them one one through five for Monday through Friday. And then Saturday is, what's that? What's that do a sock Saturday, Sky do? Can get kinda. There's Sunday is Sunday. Uh, I thought it's say do shoe yagi. I have Cindy Katsuku. Oh, yeah, that's the one I know. It's Sunday Katsuku. Little Sunday. Saturday is Little Sunday. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's my favorite day. Um, but today is Thursday. But when I was looking at the English word, I say Dalkunyagi. And then when I went to translate or interpret, I almost called it four day because <laughs> it's the fourth day. Anyway, um, April is the man, the month of true plant budding, and thirteen days have passed this month. Coming up on tax day, um, yeah. Welcome to class. We, so on Tuesday, we had a really good discussion continuing our talks about respect, implementing it in our lives as a daily training, something we're always tasked with passing to the younger generation in a good way, as the examples showed by the way Shaksani Keith learned and how she teaches respect. And we're going to segue into um, a food theme for the next few classes. And I put together a demonstration of how to do a show and tell. So you all are welcome to put together your own and I'm gonna show you how I did my first one. And um, we'll collaborate. Well, I'll need a volunteer after I'm done to create one with me since I know that typing can be a barrier and, um, for Thinget language learners um, because you need the certain keyboards downloaded and not everybody has them yet. But we'll transition into you all creating your own, and then um, we'll give you a chance next week to share them. So this is an introduction to a new activity for us. And let's get started. So um, a little bit about sharing your show and tell just before we begin. A couple things that are good to keep in mind. When I was first assigned a show and tell in my beginning thing at language class when I was a beginner, um, I got nervous. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to present something in front of everybody. I'm too scared. It's too hard. You know how your mind creates things into bigger things than they really are? So Shaq Sunny Keith and I talked about that. And we just wanted to open by reminding you, it doesn't need to be perfect to start. Uh, many times when you go to do something, it doesn't work out the way you expected it to or wanted it to. The reason we bring this up is because Chuck, Sunny, Kik, and I go through it all the time. We'll create an idea and then we're like, it didn't go the way, it went great, but it went different from how we were expecting. So... Um, just being relaxed in the knowledge that that can be how it turns out and it's okay. Um, we're here to help you and if no one's ready to share, I'll co-create one with you. So let's move on. Uh, the resource we want to work from is that's our phrase book and this is a great place to start as you're beginning to express yourselves in Tlingit because you can trust that all of the entries put into the phrase book were provided by fluent speakers and it was published by the Alaska Heritage Institute and they did the work they needed to. So um, for a demonstration of how I did my first show and tell, I recreated one, and let's take a look. Um, a place you can start is having a template for your notes. So for me, anytime I'm taking notes on something I'm gonna present, 
I like to have a table with Tlingit on the left side and then the English translation on the right. Uh, this way, when I look at notes in this format, as you can see on the screen, it's really clear for me to see which lines I'll say in Tlingit in order. And visually and verbally, I'll start to build a connection between the phrases. So we'll start really small. I put one together and I'll take you to the process of how I did this. But for my first example show and tell, I went through Tlingit Kainaksa and I picked four phrases that made sense for my content. And as you can see, it's all about being hungry and that's the chapter we're gonna work on um, since our, our week theme is food. Our week's theme is food. So for mine, I put it's lunchtime. And then I said, I'm getting hungry. And then I added, I'm hungry for fish. And then the last line I chose is, we're going to cook fish. Um, let me put those together. And then I found for this, for this purpose, I chose pictures from a Google search. I have one for lunchtime. I have one for someone being hungry, someone thinking about food and then cooking fish. And so we'll go through together looking at Finget Venexa and, and and make this little show and tell. So, opening up Tlingit Chinechsa, and it's in chapter nine, is the chapter we're gonna look at. It starts on page 31, and it's the chapter for cooking, eating, and talking about food. This is my favorite chapter in Tlingit Chinechsa. And so I'll, I, ha I have a feeling most of you have this link by now. I'm going to put it in the chat anyway in case you have newcomers or you're not familiar with it, but there's the link for the resource. And again, um, a great thing about this online version is that you can click the upper left corner icon. It's three bars. That's your menu. And go down to the bookmark view and scroll to your chapter us we're going to chapter nine you can click it and it'll hop right to chapter nine so you don't have to scroll through all the pages and to give you an idea of how i chose my phrases the other good thing about this resource is that you don't have to be super creative you could either copy phrases or exactly or if you want to change them just a little bit a great place to start with that is just changing one noun. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, you can see some of the phrases here. Are you all hungry? I'm hungry. Um, I think mine I chose I'm getting hungry. And so what I did was I started with, I'm getting hungry, and I copied this phrase over to my table and um, put it here. I put the English translation for my own studying purposes. Um, your goal will be to um, memorize and practice pronouncing them in order but for me doing this took a while like I didn't just write them all down and memorize them that day um, so just let let it be okay like when I t presented my show and tell I even had notes there for my own comfort um, but I think I tried my best to pronounce them and, and memorize them and recite them but so I started with this phrase and 
then the next one I thought, okay, if I say I'm getting hungry, what's something I could say after that? So I kept scrolling and there's this sentence here, I'm hungry for pilot bread. I copied it, um, but I wasn't really hungry for pilot bread and in my show and tell I wanted to talk about fish. So one way you can start to change the nouns is like looking at these phrases. If I say, okay, I know I'm hungry for pilot bread is got a thief uaha. What kind of things can I look for? To, how can I find out which part of that means pilot bread so that I can change it to fish? Just looking at that, you guys could unmute your mics, answer, raise your hand, however you're comfortable. I see the word eat. Uh, okay, she sees the word eat. So, got a ha. Any other ideas? And I'll keep scrolling. If you have an idea, you can unmute. Otherwise, I'll just keep looking here. Bottle is the um, word for pilot bread. Yeah, oh, uh, and how did you come to that realization? Because I read it in the book. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, that's it. That's exactly the kind of resourcefulness you'll use. So this question isn't designed to be obvious. I'm taking you through my mental process of how how I change a noun in a phrase. So one of our students recognized this word got as being the word for pilot bread. If you want to check, um, or if you're not sure, one clue I would look at is Well, I'm looking at this part and saying, that looks pretty similar to this phrase that's I'm hungry. I'm starting to make a connection between I'm hungry and the part of I'm hungry for pilot bread, that just means I'm hungry. So I'm seeing a similarity here. I might make a guess, got might be it. And what I'm gonna do now is check using the dictionary. So I'm gonna copy this word, open up the dictionary and paste it in my search bar. And um, so I'm gonna look through, as you can see on my screen, in the dictionary, got appears seven times, and I'm going to scroll through them all. But already in the first appearance, I see an example and a definition that says, originally just got, which now means pilot bread, um, could also mean fungus. So that's kind of fun. Um, I'm going to keep scrolling through my other entries and see what else I find. So now, my next one is an entry got, and I see the definition. Okay, that means fungus, but uh, I also see a description which it repeats again. Um, it's now used to refer to pilot bread. So I'm pretty sure by now that got is my word for pilot bread. Here's another one where I, I can see in a gloss that it means cracker. And not only am I finding what I'm looking for for this purpose, I'm also building a relationship with this word now, got. I'm putting together a list of meanings. Okay, it could mean fungus, it could be pilot bread, maybe it could be cracker in general. Um, as I start to express myself in Tanget, I might start using this word now that I've spent some time with it. So this is all to demonstrate that um, it won't always be a straight line like, okay, here's what I want to say, here's what I'm, here's how to say it. Sometimes it'll be a research process that takes you down a little bit of a rabbit hole and it's totally okay to spend that time. Uh, Asuka, too, you your hand is up. Yeah, this is a neat one because I noticed 
and one of them it's it, it said like um it's going around the tree and then one of the gods was for a life vest, which is like, if you think about it, it's going around your body. So then it makes me think like, oh, so um, like personal flotation device, right? So it's like, I wonder if part of it is because somewhere in there, part of it is the the going around. And so you can apply it to other words to, to going around. That's yeah. the get, seek. Anyways, it's just fascinating to share. Yeah. Yeah, so here, if we look under Qat Seek, this is an entry for life jacket, personal flotation device. And <laughs> in quotations after the entry is a literal translation. So um, cracker belt is what they put for, <laughs> for Qat Seek, which means life jacket. And if you look after that, you have what's called a gloss. So if you start seeing an entry in, or part of the dictionary entry where you're seeing plus signs and arrows. This is your gloss and it breaks down in order which each function means. So got is the first part in the thing get gloss. And if I look over to the English correlation, which is after the arrow, um, got will correlate with the first part before the plus sign. So bracket or fungus cracker. And then belt seek is the word for belt. So uh, as we mentioned, uh -huh. when, uh, when they saw the cork, it reminded them of, of the uh, fungus. Uh, it, it, the fungus is, is quite heavy, so it can be used as a floater, but uh, it's kind of interesting that they would put that name on it. Uh, when they saw cork, because cork is a flotation device. Oh, cool. That is very cool. I had never heard that before, but it makes a lot of sense. That is super cool. So that's awesome. So this takes us back to the phrase book and we're looking at this example. Now I know that pilot bread means got, which comes from fungus. It looks like a cork. It got used to describe things that look like the fungus um, as the as the thing at language adapted to uh, European contact. And so this turned into like a history lesson, a language lesson all in one. And so now I have and for my purpose, and you don't have to do this, but I wanted to change pilot bread to fish. So which, which part of the phrase will I change? Gosh, at the beginning. Yeah, oh, uh, so the part will change is got at the beginning. And we're also noticing now in English, pilot bread comes last. I'm hungry for pilot bread. And now I'm seeing a, um, a change in word order because got comes first in the finget phrase. So this is a good reminder that finget and English have different word order. That's why starting with just replacing a noun is a pretty um, safe way to start changing phrases if that's what you want to do. So here we go. Um, as our as our classmate mentioned, got is the part we want to change. And then I wanted to change it to fish. So uh, if I don't know at that point in my learning the word for fish, I can look it up. I can look it up in the dictionary. And I'm gonna scroll through till I find um, fish. And you have a plethora of things to look through here and choose. Fish is gonna show up in, in the dictionary, whether it's like part of like red rock fish, I see shape. Oh, is that what I wanna use? Or do I just want fish in general? If I just want fish in general, 
I'm going to scroll all the way down to the word. Maybe you already know the word for fish, or if you're not sure, um, you can scroll through the dictionary until you find what you're looking for. Um, mine is going to be fat. This is a word I already knew and can get. Um, but I'm going to check my spelling. So fish in general is hot. I see it's an underlined X and a high tone A A. So everyone go ahead and repeat just this word after me. Hot. Hot. Um, okay, one more time. Hot. 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 Okay. So this is one phrase I changed to mean hot. So the whole phrase, go ahead and repeat this phrase after me. Hot a hot. Hot hot. So here we have I'm getting hungry, I'm hungry for fish, and I wanted to add one more, but this is plenty. If, if you choose two lines for your first show and tell, that is plenty. I wanted to add one more, so I went back into Finget Kainachsa, and I'm looking for, what else might I use in here? There's a lot of options. Um, he or she is hungry for boiled halibut. I'm hungry for dry fish. I'm hungry for salmon. Oh, here's um, here's an entry in the phrase book. I'm hungry for salmon. So actually, my phrase was already in. If if I didn't go through that whole process, is already in here as well. So that's good. That reaffirms we're on the right track. And I'm going to keep scrolling for something else I want to add. I'm just going to choose a phrase that I like or relates to my little show and tell. Um, here I found one. Uh, we're going to cook trout. And this one again. If, if I just want to say, I could even keep it simpler. I could just say, I'm cooking fish and use this phrase. So go ahead and repeat this one after me. So I'm actually going to use that one since um, this is my first show and tell. I want to keep it really simple. And I'll say, I'm cooking fish. And then I'll check my spelling really quick. And I'm getting, as you can hear, I'm getting lots of repetition as I look in the phrase book and then type it over and then say it and then look back. I'm getting lots of repetition of the phrase, which is really good. So, so the next thing I do for me personally is I want to start building a relationship with these four phrases I chose. Oh, and okay, as you can see, I added a I added another phrase, but I put it at the front. And so that one is it's lunchtime. And I I think what I did was I kept scrolling. I wanted to see if there was anything else I wanted to add. And oh, I found it's lunchtime. So I took this, but for me to put it in order of something that makes sense to present to people, rather than putting it last, I put it first. So let's practice these phrases. And this is how I practice um, internalizing phrases. I start with pronunciation. I start very small and I kind of build my way up. Four, four lines might be too much for you when you're just starting. So you could just do, like I said, do two or three. But let's focus on the first line and um, 
let's do just for pronunciation practice. Let's start with just the first word in this phrase. So go ahead and repeat the first word after me. Sit gao san. Sit gao san. Sit gao san. And then the next word, repeat after me. Atcha. 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 So now we'll do the first two words together. Repeat after me. Sit gausan atcha. Sit gausan atcha. And then let's do the next word, gawu. Gawu. The first three words together, sit gausan atcha gawu. Sit gausan atcha gawu. And then the last word, aya. 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 And the whole line. Sit gal san at ha gal wu aya. Sit gal san at ha gal wu aya. So I have a question. Yeah. So we were talking about switching the nouns. Uh. So, like, could you also put coffee on there instead of, uh, like, it's coffee time, right? Instead of fish or lunch, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. So that's a good example. So if we look at this phrase and we want to change it from lunch time to coffee time, what words might we replace? Kao hui sit gao san. You're really close. You have kahui, which is your word for coffee. So let's go ahead and take notes. We're going to do this together. So if I want to do copy this one, and I'm going to make an alternative for our class. So we'll do copy, paste. So this one I'm going to edit. And I know that I want kahui in here. And to check my spelling, I'm going to look it up. In the dictionary, make sure I have it right. Okay, ka hui. So go ahead and repeat this word after me. Ka hui. Ka hui. Ka hui. Okay, so I'm going to copy this word and put it in our notes for our new phrase. So I'm going to start by just putting it in here. Oops. And I need to take something out. I want to say it's coffee time, not it's lunch time. So I'm going to change my English. Now something else needs to get, the word for lunch needs to be deleted. So how do we find out which words mean lunch? Atcha. Atcha, which means food. So we're going to take that oh. out. Uh, close. Gawu is time. So I'm going to, I'm going to take it, off. Gawa san is noon. Sitgao san is noon. So sitgao san atcha is lunch because it's noon, noon meal. Food. Yeah. So I'm taking off sitgao san atcha and replacing it with kahue. Now I have kahue gawu aya. So go ahead and repeat that one after me. Kahue gawu aya. Kahue gawu aya. Okay. And then to take you through. Um, if we wanted to double check, did I take out the right word? I'll start with Sitgausan. Okay, I see in the dictionary Sitgausan means noon or midday. And then I'll check the other word. And to the first entry. Because it's going to be up there in the A's. And go up. Uh, Okay, so if I look in the dictionary at atcha, I I'm reaffirming. Okay, atcha means food or meal. I'm seeing that in the dictionary right here. So we took off noon meal, meaning lunch, and replaced it with kahwe. So instead of it's lunchtime, 
So for the lunchtime example, we have Sikta Sanat Chakalukya. And then I'm going to keep practicing pronunciation. For me, this took several days of just working with it at my pace, um, practicing it, repeating it, asking for help. So at this point, I might go to um, Chuck Sunny Keek and say, does this sound right for it's lunchtime? Sit gausan at ha at gawu aya. Yeah, that sounds good, but uh, when you change the word from fish to coffee, then you're talking about two entirely different things. So when you talk about liquids, uh, changes a lot of things. Okay. Yeah. In terms of like how we consume it, how you how you serve it. <laughs> ah, okay. Oh, so that's good to know. So when we do our coffee example, we'll be asking Shaksani Kik for guidance because we know she knows more about the context of how to talk about coffee, and we'll we'll ask her for advice. Yeah, if you say, uh, hand me a cracker. Uh, when you're talking about coffee, coffee, okay. it's in. Okay. Mm. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna take notes since we have Shaksani Kik here now. I'm gonna take advantage. And so I might say, hand me a cracker, and it'll look like this. Means hand me a cracker. And if I want to talk about coffee, I'm going to change it to coffee. So in. I need a coffee. So this is a good example of the way handling verbs, the way you talk about handing something to somebody in Tlingit, it's going to be specific to the type of thing you're handling. Because the way I hand someone a cracker is going to be different from the way I hand them a, a spillable liquid. And the verb in Tlingit changes for that meaning. And so we need a we need to use the correct handling verbs. So let's practice these ones. So while we have Shaksani Kik here, let's practice this Yuhan for hand me a cracker. Um, everyone go ahead and repeat this line after me. Got a cheat tip. Oh, And did that sound right, Shaksani Kik? Yeah. Okay. And so now let's practice the one for coffee. Uh, everyone repeat after me. Kahwe achjit se in. Kahwe So now we learned another. Um, did that sound okay? Shaksani Yeah, that sounded great. Okay. So now we learned um, another another concept and can get through this process. Uh, ask you to show your hands up. Um, further to what you're saying, I, I scrolled down a little further thinking about like, okay, now now I'm full. And it's interesting because there's two different ways to say it. There's I'm full of solids. This is the bottom of 33. And then there's I'm full of liquid. So just like you were saying, like it even depends, like it changes. So those examples like after the coffee or after the food. Wow. Just yeah, it has an awesome observation. So we're looking at the bottom of page 33 where Askatiksha noticed, okay, if I'm full of solids, I might say khat shawahik. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that one after me. Khat shawahik. Khat shawahik. 
And then if I say I'm full of liquid, this next one, the, the verb to be full changes. So I'll go ahead and repeat this one after me. Chet shalat it. Chet shalat it. Yeah. And we might even add these, so since we're kind of on that theme, okay, I'm noticing the difference between words we use around solids and liquids. I might add this to my show and tell as an option, something I might want to add. So is what I'm going to add for your lunch time. And full. Of solids. And then I'm going to check my spelling, just looking back at the phrase for cut shallow hit. Cut shallow hit. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm full of liquid. Cut shallow hit. I'm going to add this to my lines of things I might include. So cut, cut shallow. So if you were going to say, I'm full of coffee, you uh, would put the coffee at the beginning? Kakwe ka sha wasit? If I'm full of coffee, would I say, kakwe ka sha wasit? Oh, I don't think you need to put the word coffee there. Okay. Uh, you can say uh, coffee tea. Such a hit. Such a hit. Okay. Coffee tea. Specify uh, time tea. Such a hit. Coffee tea. Put the word tea to. Okay. I'm full of this. I'm full of coffee. So, kahwe tin chet shalat it. This is really good. So, we just asked um, Sheikh Sani Kik if I want to specify kahwe, and she added this word for us. So, I would say kahwe tin chet shalat it. Um, but she also mentioned that you you don't necessarily need to specify because if you're saying the full liquid, maybe it's kind of known from context that it's coffee. Good question. This is really awesome participation. So now I have a long list of phrases that I've put together, this doesn't mean that I have to present all of them in my show and tell. So that's another thing I want to encourage folks to do. When you start looking at phrases and putting them together as you are now, you might come up with a whole long list. And then when it comes time for you to present something, you can always scale it back and say, okay, I'm keeping all this for my knowledge. This is a lot of good phrases I want to learn for this for particular assignment, I'm still going to keep it to two or three, just so that I can ease my way into my public speaking practice. So that's why that's all I want to add is that I encourage you to do what you're doing is keep adding stuff. And don't worry about oh, th this means I have to memorize it all now because you don't. So um, are there any questions other questions so far? So we've started practicing our pronunciation and for me, say if I'm in class and I want to be able to present this, I'm going to go ahead and start putting them to slides for my show and tell. And this is where I just did a quick Google search for um, each one of my phrases to try to find an image to put with my words to help me remember the topic I'm talking about and also to help 
communicate to my audience what I'm saying. So it's lunchtime. I'm going to take my phrase, Sitko Sanakha Kau Aya. And I'm going to copy this into my lunchtime picture. So I'm pasting it here. If I want to add the English translation or as a reminder, I can. If I do that, I'm always going to put it smaller and below the finget. Because my purpose for this exercise for myself is to practice the finget. Um, if I need a little reminder, then I might just add it really small to me. And I might make these a little more centered. And so here's our first uh, here's our first slide for our show and tell Sitka San Aya. And then I have the English below it, and then I have a picture to, to illustrate. Um, this when you do yours, you could be holding something up or whatever is comfortable for you. Um, if you have a jar of fish and you want to present it, you can. I think that's what I did for my very first one. And then for my second slide, uh, I have a picture of a woman with a fork and knife in hand. She's looking like maybe she's not super pleased. She has an empty plate in front of her. So which, uh, which phrase from our phrases we pulled together might illustrate that? I think this really lends itself to if if you would like to have a partner to do the demonstration and talk to each other. Yeah, do kahui and uh, then the other person can say shukwa out of Tuasi group in it. So uh, you can <laughs> you can team up. <coughs> you don't have to do it alone. Yeah, oh, uh, that's a really good point. So I'm just taking notes of what Shaksani Kik added for our kahwe um, dialogue. Ya du kahwe, here's coffee, and then shukwa tuasugu. I want sugar. <laughs> Sugar. Or you can say sugar tea, you sugar tea, you can. I like it. Okay. Okay. I like it with sugar. It's good with sugar. <laughs> it's good with sugar. Oh yeah, that's right. The K is it's good. It's good with sugar. No surprise there. Katsu a K U K Shukwa K U K. I like it with sugar too. And so as um, Shaksani Kik mentioned, and we want to encourage you to partner up when you do yours, you can work together and turn it, as she mentioned, into a short dialogue with a little bit of back and forth. It just makes it fun. You don't have to come up with a lot. Yeah. So for I'm getting hungry. I have this picture of a person getting hungry, so I'm just going to quickly caption. And I'm going to add the English just for my own reference for studying. I'm going to put it down below. And then I have a person here who's thinking about, like, I was like, okay, I want to, I want to illustrate that I'm hungry for fish. So what I did was take a picture of a person who's thinking and then I put a little thinking bubble and maybe like I'll add a fish there. I'm hungry for fish. And then um, like if I wanted to be creative, I could add a fish in her thinking bubble. 
And then the last one for, if I'm taking four of these lines I pulled from the phrase book, um, I'm cooking fish would be my last one. So this part of the process is just a matter of taking what you compiled. I would call this my research phase, even though it's we're, we're pulling a lot of phrases and now I get to pick from them in order to refine it into something that's concise and clear just for me to practice communicating. So I'm picking Katya um, Gahasi, and that means I'm cooking fish. And I'm going to copy it and paste. So let's put it in here. So just to demonstrate to you, now say I'm doing my show and tell. I have some slides that I can share with the class. There's a picture and it just kind of gets my point across. And so if I were to present this as my show and tell, after practicing pronunciation, I would just go to class and share my screen and say, so that's that's the end of my show and tell that you all helped me with and so um i think we should continue on with the coffee one for our next class discussion or we still have 10 minutes but before we do that are there any more questions about this process? This class always flies by. I'm like, I wish I had two more hours with you all. <laughs> Do we have a timeline for when we're going to do the show and tell, like the presentation? Yeah, we were talking about, uh, so tomorrow we have a class activity, a demonstration already lined up. Shaksani Keek is going to share with us um, a fun demonstration on making fry bread. And then next week, Shaksani Keek will be busy on a trip. So it will be us together. And we'll have that whole week to work on our show and tell exercise and potentially present them um, that next Thursday. If anyone's ready on next Tuesday, you could, or Thursday. Um, Don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah, what? Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to be a fun activity. You don't have to be so scared. Yeah, we're going to choose. Yeah, thank you for reminding us. Um, some tips we wanted to add for creating the show and tell, or as we mentioned, help each other. Um, you can choose whether you'd like to make a show and tell or a short skit. You can um, we encourage you to partner up with other students and, um, you know, like we mentioned, do some back and forth. And then if you have pictures that you want, sometimes when I do would do this for my, when I was a Tlingit language student at the university, I would use my own photographs so that if I was out on a hike and I saw some things and wanted to talk about them, I would put my own photographs on there. And you can, if that's the case with you, you can email them to me and I can put them on slides for you if you need help with that. And then Sasha Gao, your hand is up. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm taking classes through the university right now as well. And so I actually have a few PowerPoints already pre-made. Okay. Um, but um, I don't know, maybe send them in advance and then you could decide. Uh, I actually have one from the beginner, the first semester beginner that goes over like the first six chapter stuff. Uh, it's in a little cartoon fashion and then I have a little show and tell and um, I just finished doing a mini lesson on think it music and I, I was just catching up on our previous classes because I had to miss some for work 
and saw you guys were going over it and so yeah there might be a lot of good stuff in there for you so um, so I'll, I'll send that to you in an email and then let you decide what you want to use I think Eric will have to use. I'm going to put my email in the chat in case anybody doesn't have it. And if you, if anyone in here emails us slides or photographs or questions, if you want help, please do email me because Chef Sunny Keek and I go through the emails you send us in our, during our prep periods and we collaborate on answering your questions and helping you. In the discussion about uh, crackers and uh, fungus on the tree, um, I used to hear the ladies say, sailor boy caught. Oh. So that's specific if you want to use that. Okay, that's awesome. I'm going to add it to our notes. Um, so you avoid crackers or pilot bread. I would add this as almost like a consultation notes, if I'm using the terminology we use as language learners because we have the phrase book, which is an excellent resource, but we also are able to be taught directly from Shaksani Keek. And she has these memories of the language that she grew up in. And so she, when she can pull them for her, her memory, it adds context for us and, and phrases we know we can use. So it's, it's, a, it's just incredible. So I always take notes Anytime um, Shaksani Kik is adding information like that, I'm always taking notes as you can see on my screen here because it's another, another phrase you can use. I can't believe it's already end of class that flew by. Um, before we close, are there any more comments or questions? How does it feel for you all to think about having this assignment on your hands? Hello. Um, I'm actually really enjoying it. I'm finding I have to, uh, I have to kind of push myself a little bit out of my boundaries of just kind of my, my own routine, but um, I've been working on it. And one of the things I've been trying to figure out is how to say sandwich, but the closest thing I can, muster up <laughs> was a uh, sock name hawk so we took maybe squished between bread um, i got some pictures of stuff that i do in the morning cook eggs cut bacon cook bacon that kind of stuff but i just have to transfer it on to the the slides okay i don't i don't think i've ever heard uh the word uh, substitution for uh, sandwich, just a mispronunciation of it. What's that do with soft sandwich thing? It kind of sandwich. Sandwich. Think I'm gonna choose. Oh, I was telling my husband when I was a kid, I never ate any sandwiches. Never. My mom didn't know anything about peanut butter and jam sandwiches or any kind. Yeah. But uh, as ANS juniors, we used to make uh, peanut butter sandwiches for visitors when they came. We'd get that all prepared before they arrived. Mm -hmm. All wrapped up and ready to serve. Okay. That was the only kind of sandwich I ever knew about. Oh. Uh, 
I, I, I think the word that you came up with would need a lot more descriptive words than just that. Okay. Well, because uh, I guess because sandwiches weren't common among us, so they didn't have to come up with a word for it. So sandwich would suffice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, geez, good question, Kadi Kadipak. And if you have photos, I can demonstrate in the next couple of classes how to add your own photos, how I do it. I'll, I'll prepare something ahead of time for that. And we're you at, didn't cut, uh, use the word you came up with, uh, but I think it needs a little more description, probably in a demonstration about how to do it. Okay. Oh, yeah, uh, new words are welcome. Yeah, goodness, geez. Yeah, I was going to start out by saying that I cut the bacon and I beat the eggs. I cook the bacon and the eggs and then I squish it between bread. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think you. When you talk about that and then say how you what you call it, you know, the name you gave it, and so, on, so then people will will know uh, because that's pretty picturesque to to go that route. Yeah, I'm getting hungry for breakfast sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll have a sandwich for lunch. Yeah, we all know what we're having for lunch now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be a fun class activity. If you want to email me photos or if you want me to show, if you put those on slides, we could even work as a class together with Chuck's on eight feet and be like, is this how you would say this? Cool. I'll see what I can put together. Um, uh, but tomorrow, is, I, I might be able to put something together. I like to use, I got this little menu thing I use, but um, maybe we can discuss that later because we're kind of out of time. Um. Um, we're at time, but uh, gonna... Chuck Saniki, did you have any more comments or questions for closing? Yeah, I think the closing is good. Just uh, be, be, uh, be aware that you can pair up with somebody to do your presentation if you don't like, can't figure out how you can do it alone. So that's okay. Okay, Han. Good enough, Chi. See you, Janae. You have to click it because thanks for your work. We feel proud of you. We'll see you here uh, tomorrow, same time, same Zoom. See you. Pasatine.